Ambassador, uh, has the vaccine diplomacy, so there's been, it's, if you look at the press, this idea of vaccine diplomacy of countries competing against each other to not only deliver uh, vaccines, but to, to do it, A, to help the folks there, but also to achieve other objectives, uh, other foreign policy objectives. This is my question to you is, number one, uh, who, who, are the, who are the actors in that race? Uh, who won, if anyone? Uh, and did it, A, meet some of our global needs with respect to the vaccine, and B, did it help countries meet broader foreign policy objectives? So Kevin, I, I think Dr. Bedelia has already set the stage so that it's clear enough that the international community has not done well. If you were wondering, and you shouldn't be, we have not succeeded. And you use the word failed. Um, there is no good time to throw a pandemic. But it happens that this pandemic struck the world at a time of broad disruption in international relations. By disruption, what I mean is that there was a certain kind of international order that's been building. You've, in your courses, you've heard of it referred to as the liberal international order. It's a series of agreements, of understandings, of institutions. And in the best of circumstances, they don't necessarily work that well. But this pandemic hit at a time when the United States and China were at loggerheads. It hit at a time when um, we were facing other disruptions, economic disruptions, but also migration, also all the impact from climate. All of this, unfortunately, created an environment in which there was not sufficient trust for the institutions that existed to operate effectively. And then, I think, frankly, we were too slow in developing on the, on the run institutions that could be effective. So a really good sign of this is uh, Ebola hit in first November, but really became known in December and then of 2019 and then January of 2020. COVID. Uh, COVID. Well, yeah, pardon. Although Ebola did also occur in December. <laughs> yeah, it must be, it must be something about the weather. Uh, COVID. It took until July 1st of 2020 for the UN Security Council to pass a resolution which was utterly toothless. And unlike the reaction to Ebola, the UN Security Council did not identify COVID as a threat to international peace and security. And then there was another resolution in February of uh, 2021, which also had no real teeth. So I think that the answer to this is that instead of having vaccine diplomacy, we went full head on into vaccine nationalism. And the big players were the countries that were able to produce vaccines, and then the countries that had the money to buy vaccines. So the United States, Europe, China, India, Russia, even Cuba got into the, into the game. Um, and given the, the low level of trust, two things happened. One was, COVAX, and we can talk about COVAX and, and what it did, this consortium to try to buy up vaccines rolled out too slowly because the instrument was not really ready yet. And it could not compete with nation states that locked up the vaccine by early purchases. I brought a little, I brought a little graph with me here, uh, which is a little bit scary. And I'm not sure anyone out there can see it. This is a graph that's relatively early in the process, and that was really important of who bought how many vaccines per person. Now you think it's going to be the United States locking up the vaccines, but actually Canada bought nine times the number of vaccines it needed right off the bat. Australia was also high, then Britain, then the United States, European Union, Japan, Nepal, India, Uzbekistan. Countries locked up the vaccines. And then the next step was the competition. And that competition, frankly, I think was really cynical. Countries started to say they would provide vaccines. And frankly, I think what they were mostly looking for was good press. So China was out front on this. But actually, if you look at the figures, 96% of China's vaccine exports have been for sale, not as donations. And speaking of disruption, this hit during the Trump administration when we had an administration that was particularly unwilling to cooperate not only with China, but also with international institutions. The, 
the symbolic crashing error was the decision uh, of the Trump administration to withdraw from the World Health Organization. So the United States stepped back, and we weren't present and actively participating in the birth of COVAX to give it the boost it really needed. Now we're in the game and things are beginning to change, but I think I'll stop there so we can get on to the next question.